Glory to Jesus Christ. Hi, it's Father Andrew Summerson again, and I'm here today to sing with you the Beatitudes so that you begin to incorporate them more into your singing experience of the Divine Liturgy. This is something that Bishop Milan has asked for in this time in which we center all our energies, efforts, and prayer uh, around the Beatitudes as we're on the synodal path together. Uh, when we get to the singing of the Beatitudes, I uh, just want to bring to your attention a couple things. The, the Ukrainian Greco-Catholic Catechism, uh, which the Ukrainian Church uh, we share a lot in common with, in particular the Byzantine tradition, and our hearts are with them, especially as this time uh, they are enduring such a difficult period, a terrible war, uh, and we really entrust uh, them to the patronage and the protection of the Mother of God. Uh, who's our rampart and our protection of all things. We entrust them uh, to the mercy of God that he may a swift end uh, to war as we enter into this period of great fast. Let always reminds us at the end of matins and vespers, uh, we get this opportunity to pray for the calming of the nations. And so that's what we ask uh, for. Uh, coming back to this gift that the Ukrainian Catholic Church has given to us, a catechism that really tries to respond uh, from the heart of our shared Byzantine tradition uh, to summarize the truths of the faith. It calls the Beatitudes an icon in words. It's an icon in words. This is the description of the blessed life, the Beatitudes. And Jesus, who is the word become flesh, offers an example of beatitude and a way to have beatitude insofar as we participate in, so that our flesh can become these very words, the very words of the beatitude. And the way that we begin to incarnate these words is by singing it at the liturgy. So the green book that most of you all sing from on Sundays, transcribes the Beatitudes according to the tonate Kentuckian melody. One of the things that Byzantine music tries to do is it tries to unite themes through melody. We'll have martyr hymns with particular melodies in Vespers and the Stichera between feasts, all the different martyrs will have a particular melody to sort of unite the theme of martyrdom so that we can sort of connect the dots from these various places in the liturgy and throughout the liturgical year. In the same way, uh, the Kentucky Tone 8 melody is primarily a hymn of the resurrection. Tone 8, rising from the dead, you destroyed the dead. Rising from the grave, you destroyed dead. This, the singing of this melody wants to unite what we sing about the resurrection, both when Sunday Tone 8 comes, both on the Sunday and also on the Sunday of Pascha, wants to unite the Beatitudes with the understanding of the resurrection. Because the Beatitudes describe what resurrected life looks like. It means that we who are pure of heart will see God face to face. Not dimly as in a mirror, but bright face to face we'll see that beautiful Christ. So let's sing the Beatitudes. And you're welcome to singing along and hope this becomes a useful tool to be able to incorporate this kind of worship into your parishes. Remember us, O Lord, when you come in your kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, 
for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. This ends our videos. You're welcome to share this. Do whatever you need to make sure uh, that nothing hinders us from being able to sing this together in worship. The Beatitudes, that we find them in the typical Psalms, and here we have this option to incorporate them in the Divine Liturgy. Uh, one of the few places that we sing the Beatitudes elsewhere in the Byzantine Rite is at the funeral service. The funeral service, there we stand before the casket. The dead body lies there and we are commending that person, their soul, back to the Lord. And what do we sing? We sing the Beatitudes. The reason for that is, is that the Beatitudes describe what the perfected Christian life looks like. And we, at the end of our life, make this self-offering back to God, having inscribed the Beatitudes in our heart through the singing of them at the liturgy, through the walking of the Christian life, and the constant repentance, the falling down and the getting up, so that through that process, the Lord can reform us for the blessed life, the life that sees God, the life that is quenched in their hunger and thirst for righteousness, because at the end of life, we'll meet righteousness himself. the joy that we'll know because the persecution on this earth will end because the reward that's great in heaven will be at hand. So with that, I wish you, your families, your communities, all of you that you endeavor to sing the Beatitudes with, a blessed Lent, blessed time as we walk in syndality together, together with Bishop Milan, your pastors, all the members of the Eparchy of Parma, uh, so that we can come to a better knowledge of that beautiful Christ that wants to give every gift to us. But all we got to do is open up and prepare ourselves to it. Let the Beatitudes crack you open to be able to receive those gifts. Glory to Jesus Christ.